Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and a special welcome to any visitors we have with us. We're glad, glad to have you here with us and invite you to come and be with us again. We also welcome those who join us uh, from the uh, parking lot. Uh, we're glad to have you join us for worship as well. A reminder that our worship services are video recorded and are available through the church website when they're posted early in the week. Susie, I think you have an announcement. I'm going to uh, call you up now, please. Good morning. Uh, one final reminder, this is a busy week for the ministry. We have the Louisiana Hayride Big Fundraiser Thursday, and I will be selling tickets in the back this morning. We also have raffle tickets for a quilt giveaway on sale back there at the same time. Another reminder, if you are available around noon or a little afternoon on Tuesday, if you could help cut up the celery, bell peppers, and onions, you would... Uh, your help would be appreciated with that. That's St. John's around noon on Tuesday, August 6th, and the big fundraiser is Thursday, August 8th. Thank you. Thank you. Another announcement. Um, all youth are invited to the Blue Bell Aquatic Center this Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. for a swim party there. This comes from Next Generation, which is the uh, youth ministry that we are cooperating in with area churches. So all youth are invited. Bluebell Aquatic Center this Friday, 7 to 9. I asked the, the uh, youth in Sunday school if they were ready to cool off. So that sounds like a good way to do it. This is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We continue to hear about Jesus revealing himself as the bread of life. Christ is risen. He is risen Please stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Luther's small catechism, the sacrament of holy baptism, section one. What is baptism? Baptism is not simply plain water. Instead, it is water used according to God's command and connected with God's word. What then is this word of God? Where our Lord Jesus Christ says in Matthew 28, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The first lesson is from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, 
and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up, came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Here ends the reading. We'll read the psalm responsively. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and winged birds, like the sand of the sea. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above and all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He was descended, he who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel lesson according to St. John, the sixth chapter. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? 
Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then? So that we may see it and believe you. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. But it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. If the crowd we have been hearing about in the last few weeks is anything, it is persistent. Two weeks ago, we heard that Jesus got into a boat with his disciples to get away to a more isolated place. But somehow, the crowd figured out where he was headed and raced to get it there ahead of him. Last week, we heard that this crowd, after eating their fill, was planning to take Jesus and make him king. They were so insistent that Jesus had to flee to a mountain to get away from them, and the disciples left in boats to go to another place away from the crowd. A couple of verses just before our gospel text for today says the crowd noticed that the disciples had left by boat, but that Jesus had not gone with them. And we hear that some boats from Tiberias came near to the shore where this crowd was. And so at the beginning of our gospel lesson, It says that the crowd got into these boats to go to Capernaum looking for Jesus. The crowd is persistent, searching, searching, searching for Jesus. Today's gospel lesson asks a pertinent question of us and this crowd. What were they? What are we searching for? There are three things that seem to be the object of the crowd's search. It seems some in this crowd were searching for a supply of free food. I'm always amazed how many folks show up at church for a free meal. In last week's lesson, Jesus fed the 5,000 from five barley loaves and two fish. The crowd ate their fill, all that they wanted. And still there were 12 baskets left over. 
Jesus had freely provided in abundance. But the crowds wanted more. It's interesting to remember that in that the people in Moses' day were to collect only enough manna for that day. Of course, except on Fridays when they collected enough for two days so that they would not collect on the Sabbath. If they tried to collect more, if they tried to hoard more, it got worms in it and was spoiled. God didn't let them hoard. The leftovers, after Jesus fed them, did not seem to go bad as quickly as the manna in Moses' day did. Perhaps, though, that this was one reason they wanted Jesus to keep supplying them with more and more and more. But Jesus honestly calls their bluff. He plainly tells them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that the God the Father has set his seal." The crowd was searching for a food vendor, someone who would continue to provide them with food in abundance. They wanted someone who would give them their fill regularly, someone who would serve and fulfill what they wanted when they wanted it. But Jesus doesn't trust this crowd. Jesus is clear. If you're only looking for him to give you free food, that's an insufficient reason. They, the crowd, were searching for the wrong thing from Jesus. It's not enough to search for bread that perishes. Even the earthly food Jesus provided would eventually spoil. Rather, the search should be for bread that endures for eternal life. Others in the crowd seem to be searching for a new Moses or a prophet. Now the crowd would have been looking for someone like this. You see, before he died, Moses had promised that God would send a prophet like himself sometime in the future. Expectations for the promised Messiah was that he would give and interpret God's law as Moses had done and that the Messiah would do signs like Moses had done. They even mentioned such a sign being manna in the wilderness and note how Moses had given their ancestors bread from heaven to eat. But what's interesting is they don't recognize Jesus' recent provision of food as such a sign. Even though they had been fed in abundance, they do not recognize Jesus' recent provision of food as coming from God. As evidence that they have not truly seen the sign that Jesus did in feeding the multitude, they ask for a further sign from him. They apparently want a sign from the old days, repeated. They remember the story of Moses and the manna and seem to be requesting something like that. They are looking to the past, failing to see that God the Father is doing something astonishingly new right in front of them. Once again, Jesus has to correct and clarify their understanding and expectations. The true giver of the manna in Moses' day was not Moses, Jesus says, but he reminds them, it was my father. You see, the people need to see beyond the supposed source, Moses, 
to the true source, God. Likewise, the true giving was not in the past, but it was in the present as Jesus stood before them. The true bread was not the manna in Moses' day, but is the bread of God that has now come down from heaven in the person of Jesus. To search for manna of Moses' day is insufficient. To truly see requires seeing beyond the apparent worldly sources to see that it is God who truly provides bread for life. Others in the crowd seem to be searching for a king who will free them politically from the current oppressors, the Romans and their allies. Last week's gospel lesson said that that feeding of the 5,000 occurred when the Passover was near. Remembrance of the Exodus would certainly have been on the mind of the people. A primary outcome of the exodus was that the Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt. The height of this freedom was the strong kingdom of David when the nation was strong, free, and at peace. The people long for this type of nation again. It was expected that the coming Messiah would be a political leader who would rule like David had and provide strength, peace, and prosperity like David's reign. Sounds like a political commercial, doesn't it? Some in the crowd still want to make Jesus king. Surely, because of his healing power and power over demonic forces, Jesus can be the great political leader they desire. But this view is insufficient. Too limited. It again longs for a past that is idealized as perfect. If only we could have someone take us back to what we once were in our own memory. Jesus' challenge to the crowd that wants a limited worldly kingdom is to get them to see that God is up to something more than a reestablished earthly kingdom. He is the bread come down from heaven. A bread that gives eternal life. That brings an eternal kingdom. The fullness of God's action is seen through the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. This eternal kingdom that defeats and rules over sin and death is the only one that encompasses the fullness of what God is. The crowd needs to see this fullness and not limit God to a worldly kingdom and worldly things. As I mentioned, this gospel text not only presented a question to the crowd, It presents us with a question. Are we diligently searching? If so, what are we searching for? Is our searching insufficient as was the crowd's searching? Do we search for more than free food? Said another way, Is our goal to satisfy our desires when we want? Or do we see beyond our desires and search and see what God desires for us? 
Are we willing to be satisfied with this? What God wants for us? Are we looking to the past? To a time when everything was perfect. At least in our idealized memory. I think if we would go back there. We would find out it wasn't so perfect after all. Are we so focused on our rear view mirror of ministry. So that we miss what God is doing something new right in front of us? Are we seeing God and his work in our midst? Or do we settle for worldly prophets and kings with limited vision? We claim to be death and resurrection people. We boldly confess that God brings new life from death. But this is an uncomfortable and sometimes dangerous proposition to live. Are we really willing to let things we have always done die if they get in the way of God bringing new life. That is what God promises through the bread of life, a completely new life. Are we willing to let God be in complete control, even if it means death for things that have been a part of us? Do we really want to search for a God who bids us to die in him so that we may have eternal life in him? These are the questions facing the crowds as they stood in the very presence of God in Jesus Christ. These are the questions we are facing as we stand in the very presence of God in Jesus Christ. And we're going to be right in his presence when we receive him truly present in the bread and the wine today. He is the crucified and risen Lord who calls us to trust him and follow him with our whole lives. Do you dare to search? Will you see God in him? We are death and resurrection people, but we must know what that calling demands. For you see, believing in resurrection is okay. But living resurrection is quite another thing. Blessings on your searching. May you see God at work, offering and calling you to the bread of life, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
please stand. <clears throat> Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh, wise one, your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning. Pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole church, especially the newly baptized, lay leaders, deacons, pastors, and bishops. Merciful God. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life. Where the sun blazes hard and strong, bring a gentle breeze. In the places experiencing the cold of winter, bring your warmth. Merciful God, compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority that power is directed toward a more just society. Merciful God, bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God. O wisdom of truth, help us to understand your will for the church. Be with congregations experiencing transition, redevelopment, and the exciting yet frightening path of newness. May your wisdom be found at every step. Merciful God. Merciful God, you care for every living creature and person. Be with those who are close to death. Heal the sick and suffering, especially Zachary Weigelt, Michelle Osgood, Ray Meyer, Karen Hormel, Herbert Rust, Lindley Kasurik, Edward Meyer, Patricia Williams, Tammy Browner, Ramona Parker, Teresa Goldson, Teresa. Leonard Wolf, Leonard. Ronnie Schulte, Ronnie. and others we now name. Comfort those who have lost loved ones, especially the family of Mary Louise Hoff, Mary. Aubrey Harmel, Aubrey. and others we now name. Michelle. Michelle. Merciful God. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witness of your saints now departed. Bring your beloved into eternal glory, opening wide the gates of the heavenly banquet. Merciful God. We, let up, we lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace with one another. Peace of the Lord with you. In response to God's love and grace, we bring our offering.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. I ask all those who are going to receive communion in the pews or in the cars to prepare your elements. If you need a communion kit, please notify the ushers. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.